if you plan to play some sort of mage build in Elden Ring, then you're definitely going to want to know all of these seven staffs and why they are pretty much the best staffs that you can get in the game. We're going to go over each staff, why it's good, where you get it, so that you can choose which one is for you and your build. If you do enjoy these videos, make sure to drop a sub down below and a like, and let us know in the comments if there are any staffs that we missed that you think are particularly good. I'm Paradise, so let's jump into it, starting with the Carrion Regal Scepter. This is the Magic Scepter of Renala, the Queen of the Full Moon. The glint stone on it is known as the Carrion Blue, which enhances Full Moon sorceries. Only those of the highest intelligence may wield this, the finest of all glintstone staffs. That's a description of the weapon, and as it did say, it boosts those full moon sorceries. That includes Renala's full moon and Rani's dark moon. It's worth remembering that passive effects like this one that boosts full moon sorceries also work in your offhand, so you can combo them with high sorcery scaling staffs in one hand to cast with, and passives from another staff in your offhand. This is probably the most powerful non-FP cost increasing staff for pure builds and has a really nice unique skill version of spinning weapon which is not only more visually flashy but actually does good damage and massive stagger. It does however require 60 intelligence to wield this so you will have to be fairly high level in order to actually use this one but again it's one of the most powerful staffs that doesn't increase the FP cost of your spells. You can obtain this by beating Queen Renala and getting her Remembrance. She's the boss in Rhea Lucaria Academy. And of course, you then take the Remembrance to the Round Table Hold to Enya and trade it for this staff. Next up, we're going to talk about the Azure's Glintstone Staff. This is the staff of the Prime Evil Glintstone Sorcerer Azure. Only those who have glimpsed what lies beyond the wisdom of the stone may wield it, as the description on the weapon goes. And this reduces the casting time of all sorceries, but at the cost of an additional FP increase. Essentially, this gives you around 40 virtual dexterity towards your sorcery and incantation casting speed, which is around an 8% increase in casting speed. But remember that that casting speed bonus caps at 70 dexterity, and the staff obviously increases your FP cost of your spells by around 20%. So if you have 30 dexterity, the 40 virtual bonus from this will reach you the highest casting speed you can get. And for reference, the Radagon Icon Talisman gives you 30 virtual dexterity towards your casting speed. So this staff gives you a little bit more than that talisman. Remember, this is another passive effect that can work in your offhand. So you can use this in your offhand while casting with another staff with higher sorcery scaling in order to benefit benefit from the virtual dexterity increase, but you will still suffer the 20% extra FP cost. This staff also has quite a high int requirement at 52, so similar to the Carrion Regal Scepter, this is going to be more of a mid to end game staff. The location to get this one requires a bit of a run and some parkour, so starting at the Debate Parlor Grace Point in Rhea Lucaria Academy, follow the route that I'll show you now.
Next up, we're going to talk about the Carrion Glintstone Staff. This staff is embedded with a blue glintstone, one of two types of the Carrion Staffs. This is given to sorcerers when they might enact the role of a knight and enhances the Carrion Sword Sorceries by about 15%. This includes things like the Carrion Greatsword, Carrion Piercer, Carrion Slicer, and the powerful Agula's Moonblade. Much like before, this passive will work in your offhand, so you can combine this with another higher sorcery scaling staff to benefit from that damage bonus. And this one only requires 24 intelligence and only weighs 3, so this is relatively early game viable and quite low on the weight compared to some of the other staffs. And this one is found on a corpse in the Carrion Study Hall right before the second lift in the Lyurnia of the Lakes. Then for the next one we have to talk about Lazat's Glintstone Staff. This is the prime evil Glintstone Sorcerer Lazat's Staff. Only those who have glimpsed what lies beyond the wisdom of the stone may wield it, and it enhances the power of all sorceries at the cost of additional FP. And when it says additional FP, that means 50% increased FP cost. This is quite simply the highest sorcery scaling staff in the game for pure int builds, at that whopping 50% FP increase cost. Early game, this will be less viable, but later game, when you can invest more in your mind stat, this doesn't become quite so bad, and things like the infinite FP flask tier or the primal glint stone blade talisman do help mitigate the increased FP cost that this staff gives you. This does have a 52 intelligence requirement, so will again be a mid to late game staff anyway in terms of equipping it. And you can find this in Celia, the town of sorcery in Caled, in the chest north of the Nox Swordstress and Nox Priest boss duo's chamber after beating them. But you will have to do a short puzzle to unlock this boss door, which we explain and show in depth on a video that's already on the channel that you can see on screen now. Next up, we have to also talk about the Meteorite Staff. This is a staff embedded with a dark purple glintstone, said to be a fragment of a meteorite. It has a very low int requirement at 18 and is one of the very best early game staffs you can get, and it can be obtained as soon as level 1. However, this staff cannot be upgraded, so it does fall off at the higher levels, but it does have that passive gravity sorcery boost passive on it, which gives you around a 30% increased power to your sorceries of the gravity type, including Rock Sling, Collapsing Stars, Gravity Well, Meteorite, and the powerful Meteorite of Estelle. This means, like we mentioned before, it can always work as an offhand to get that bonus damage to your gravity sorceries. You can find this one in Kaelid in the swamp near the Celia Crystal Tunnel. You can see it here on the map now, but we have an in-depth example video already on the channel that shows you how you can get it as soon as a level 1 fresh character, so you can check that video out that you can see on the screen now if you want to go and find it more in depth. The next two staffs on this list are hybrid staffs and therefore will not be as powerful as any of the pure int focus staffs, but if you are making a hybrid build, these will be the best for you. We'll start with the Prince of Death staff. This is a staff embedded with the Sullied Amber, said to be a very part of the Prince of Death himself, and this one also enhances death sorceries. This staff has also been deemed heretical by the Academy for its ability to allow sorceries to be augmented through both intelligence and faith, so this is perfect for a faith int hybrid build. This staff scales quite well the higher level you are, but remember it's a hybrid staff for faith and int, which means it usually won't outperform pure focused builds, but you do get that added versatility and variety of spells and incantations when you go for a hybrid build, so this staff will be best if you are going in that direction. You can find this one in the Deep Roots Depths nearest the nameless Eternal City Grace Point. You'll need to make your way up some routes to a tower to find this staff, and you can follow where I'm going now in the video to find it. And then finally, we have the Albanoric Staff. We're including this one because it's one of our only options for Int and Arcane builds, as it scales with both Int and Arcane on this staff. This is a short staff with a blue glintstone embedded on it, wielded by the Albanorics of old. 
the Albinorics harbor a secret, and that's that they cast their sorceries using innate arcaneness, which is obviously why this one is a hybrid int arcane staff. According to the Fextra Life wiki, this also increases the status buildup of effects of thorn sorceries. You can find this one in the Volcano Manor area nearest the Guest Hall Grace Point. From here you want to take two lefts, then take the stairs up to the next floor, head outside, turn left up the ladder to the roof, then you go to the very back and jump off down to the right. It looks like too far to jump, but you'll be fine. Once you go in there, there will be an omen killer, and you can either kill him or sneak up and take the staff, as well as the Albinoric Mask for yourself. Let us know down in the comments if you found this video helpful or if there are any other staffs you want to talk about, let's discuss it in the comments and all learn together. Do make sure to drop a subscribe if you did find this helpful and want more videos like this one, and of course a like if you thought the video was good. Thank you for watching everyone, make sure to click the video on screen now because we have lots more Elden Ring videos that we think you will really enjoy so don't miss out on them on the screen now.